G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and in this video we're going to be using Adobe Flash to animate a transformation of this character into the Incredible Hulk. If you couldn't tell by those iconic purple ripped pants. Before we get stuck into it, make sure you check out the reference file in the description which will contain the finished file that we will create today making this transition. And before we get stuck into the actual animation and the drawing of the transition, I'm going to go through a little bit of the process beforehand because it's going to be a very intense sort of process. As you can see, I've reserved 50 frames for this transition to take place. And because it's a frame by frame transformation that takes place over that duration, it's going to be done on doubles, which means that in the end, the result will be 25 original drawings showing that transformation. Now, the reason we have to be extra careful is because if we get something wrong in the process of doing that or the transformation slightly off, it can be really frustrating and almost impossible to just make little changes. You kind of have to redraw entire frames or even half of the animation segment to make things look right. And so we want to really avoid doing damage control control later down the line and the worst way to go about a very big visual transformation is to just start animating frames. The problem with this is it's very difficult to maintain correct proportions in things like the head or uh, the gradual changes in the body as you make progress if you're just doing it like that. The best way to do it is to have key frames along the way and then animate the in-betweens. And I've talked about this in the past, but to begin, you really want a solid foundation. And as my singing teacher used to say, it's what's in the beginning and at the end that counts. The middle can be crap. Now, obviously that's not entirely true, but if we have our first frame created and our last frame created, then we can improvise the middle to make it work as smoothly as possible. This is a graphic symbol. So when I enter this, you can see I've got my own little timeline happening and I want to explain what I've prepared beforehand. On my bottom layer is something that's set to a guide layer. You can do that by right clicking and pressing guide. And that means that it's not visible in the main timeline or when I render or test the animation. But as you can see, I've done all my my sketchy work here in that guide layer. The layer above that is the finished color image and like I said having the very beginning and end of the transition handled first makes everything a lot easier. So I have already drawn my beginning frame as you can see here but I've also drawn the finished result and so this is what he will be looking like when he's turned into the Hulk. It's a very big transition as you can see there's a lot of changes a lot of vascularity and muscle definition appears so we need to kind of have that gradually appear the proportions are completely different and not to mention the color. But to create this transformation, we're just gonna begin by focusing on the line work. So the layer above this, if I hide my middle layer and show my top layer, is nothing but the line work. And we're not gonna worry about color until we get the animated line work transformation happening perfectly first. So you can forget about color for now. There are a few really cool approaches that I'm gonna show you later on, but now we're really just gonna focus on the line work frame by frame transition. And this is going to be a very involved, time consuming process. So you got to really prepare yourself. And I'm fully expecting this to take about three to four hours to animate 25 frames. So the first thing I'm going to do to make sure that my transformation is nice and smooth and looks really cool is I'm going to go to my guide layer that I've set up here. As you can see, I made a few changes to the face. So don't worry about the differences there, but this was just the first sketch I drew. And I'm going to create three keyframes separate to these two so that in the end we're going to have a total of five keyframes one in the beginning one in the middle one at the end and then two in between those two transition points between the start and the middle and the middle and the end but the first keyframe i want to make is between these two so to do this i'm going to create a new keyframe on frame 49 which is directly in between the uh the previous section and the last section don't worry about spacing at the moment obviously there's a huge chunk of spacing where it's just him normal like this and then one frame at the end we'll just mess with that later but for now we have this empty keyframe and i want to be able to see the frames before and after. So I'm going to unlock my guide layer and I'm going to click this button here which is called the onion skin tool and when I hit this you'll see this little thing appear 
on our timeline control. So I'm gonna click and drag these little dots on the edges just so that we only show one frame before and one frame after. And then when we go to our blank keyframe, you can see the frames before and after. The problem is they're a bit light at the moment. So I'm gonna make a few little changes. The frame after, I'm gonna turn into a rich red and the frame before, I'm gonna turn into a rich blue. And then when I go between those, you can see very clearly where the previous frame and the next frame are. My task now is to draw something in between these two frames that looks like the halfway point in the transition. I'm gonna draw my in-between frame in a flat black just so that it's very clearly visible from the red and the blue onion skin frames. And I'm gonna keep my style really sketchy. I'm not gonna worry about refining anything at the moment. I just wanna get the motion and uh, the proportion transition as well done as I possibly can. So I finished my first rough in-between and like I said, it's very rough. And if I hide my onion skin and flip back and forth between them, you can see that there's a beginning of the motion taking place. Now something you may have noticed that I've done, the first frame is pretty relaxed and all the limbs are down and the last frame is in a resting position. But we don't want to go from relaxed to resting. We want to show the motion happening. We want to convey some drama and real intensity in the animation. So to do that in this halfway frame, I haven't simply just gone uh, in the middle position between them. I've created a middle sort of pose, which is in the midst of its intensity. Now we're going to do the same thing between the last and the middle frame and then the first and the middle frame, but I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to really build that intensity. So between the first and the middle frame, I'm going to have him really build in tension. So have him sort of hunch as he starts growing. And then in this second last frame, I'm gonna have him really releasing that tension. Okay, so I've got the basic transformation, but everything's kind of a funny color at the moment. So I'm gonna return it to my rough line work color, which is this really light blue. And then once I've done that, I can scroll back and forth between the frames to see if the motion I've got is the one I want in the end. To get an even clearer idea in more of a context, I'm going to separate these. So you can see that we have a bit of a build up and anticipation, the tension's building, and then we're in our final resting position. There is one thing I kind of want to do to make a quick change is I want to raise this right foot off the ground just so he kind of stomps down when he's in his final resting pose. So there we go, we have that build up and kabam. So I'm pretty happy with how this transition looks. I'm going to lock my rough layer and I'm gonna go back to my line work layer and I'm gonna do this in exactly the same order I did my rough line work, starting with the middle one and then the two in between poses. But this time I wanna keep things as refined as possible. In doing this, I'm not actually using the onion skin tool because it would be far too visually confusing. So I'm actually just keeping the rough layer visible and just rocking back and forth and viewing the previous and latter line work frames. Okay, so the next part is one of the most painstaking parts of the whole process. It's called the in-between. Now it's painstaking, but it's actually not difficult. So that's kind of cool. So you can chuck on an audio book, listen to some good music, zone out and just get the job done. Essentially what we're doing, I'm gonna hide my reference layer and all I need are my final line work layers. I'm gonna divide these frames evenly throughout the piece. And then as you can see, as I scroll across with my frames evenly divided now, you can see that I have that motion sort of evenly distributed. So to create an in-between frame, we're doing almost the same thing that we did with our rough frames. We create a blank frame between the two frames and we select our onion skin tool and we simply fill in the blanks between the frame before and the frame after. So as you can see the spike in the hair, we just kind of follow that motion and draw in the middle and we just do this for the whole picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the in-between frame of these two frames and then of these two, then of these two and then of these two.
Now that I've finished my first set of in-betweens, you'll be able to see once I spread things out a bit that the motion is much smoother throughout this transformation. To demonstrate this, I'm actually going to spread these frames a little bit apart from each other in such a way that they give a little more of an accurate sense of timing. So if I play from the start, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. Now I actually want this transition to happen relatively quickly. So I'm gonna put these frames maybe four frames apart from each other and more in the middle of the timeline. So that way we can have a slower build up and a little bit more of a release that takes more time than just uh, an immediate finish. And I'm gonna keep moving them around a little bit and just make tweaks until the motion feels right, till the timing is exactly how I want it to be. So I'll play it. And uh, it's all pretty steady at the moment. I like the slow build up at the start, but I actually want it to pause by the time he has his leg up and then the last few frames with the stomp to happen pretty quickly. Rub, boom. Okay, now I also have a clearer sense as to where most of the in-betweens will be. So for example, we have this last transition here, there'll probably be only one or two in-betweens. Whereas here in all the earlier part of the animation, we want this to be as smooth as possible. So there's gonna be quite a lot more in-betweens, but the process is exactly the same as I've shown you. So to create an in-between, I hit F7 between these two frames and use the onion skin to draw in the middle of them. So I've now finished the motion and I'll play that through from the start, I'll press enter. You can see it's growing and kaboom, here's the Hulk. So next I'm gonna add some color and the first thing I'm gonna do is just the flat colors because there's no messing around here. So I'm gonna bring out my color layer that I've already got and just bring it over to the side. I'm just gonna shrink it a bit because there's gonna be a reference. And I'm gonna do the same with my big Hulk. I'll just kind of shrink him and put him over in the corner. And I'm not gonna worry about the skin just yet because as you know, that's gonna change color. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the flat colors. I'm gonna select my eyedropper, go back up to my line work frame and painting their hair and the eyebrows and then quite simply go through all of the frames and do the same thing. Now, sometimes when you paint, you'll see that it kind of fills in areas that it shouldn't. So areas like that, if that happens, I kind of fill it in bit by bit just to make sure that all of the uh, mini gaps are all blocked off. So I'm gonna go through and do this with the hair and then I'm also gonna go through and do this with the white of the teeth and the eyes and then the purple of the pants. Now this next part is potentially really tricky because we have a skin color that's gonna be transitioning into a green skin color. Now you might think the way to go about this is to paint the skin color, then slowly try and manually change it in the eyedropper area. But the problem with this, like the approach of animating without keyframes and without pre-planning it, we can make mistakes and editing it can be an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that will make things so much easier and will be easier to edit. And you can even on the fly change it if you want so his skin turns into a red or a, a yellow or whatever you want. So I'm gonna divide this into three steps. The first step is to create a mask. To do this, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna select all of these frame by frame areas that I've got so far, just all of those on the timeline and hit Control Alt C. And then on the frame above, I'm gonna double click to select the whole area and then hit Control Alt V. This copied and pasted the entire sequence of frames in exactly the same position onto the frame above. So I have a duplicate and I don't need to worry about messing with the original. Now I actually want my mask to be underneath the line work layer that I already have. So I'm gonna just keep my duplicate up the top here as the original and I'm gonna hide and lock it. And then selecting the row below, I'm gonna select a really out there color that's easy to notice. And I usually go with a red because it's just a very loud loud, hard to miss color. And I'm painting in the whole skin area. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and do this for all of the frames and then I'm gonna come back and delete everything except for the red. So to do this, I'd select the whole frame and then with my selection tool activated, I'm gonna hold shift and just click on their red areas that I've already painted. And this will deselect them. And then I simply hit delete 
and then all I have left is the red area. So I can test if I have enough red area there by making my line work visible and you can see that it's all filled in. So I'll just hide it again and I'm going to go through and create this red mask area through on the layer underneath for all of the frames of the animation. Now you might notice that while I'm deleting everything except for the red, I drag everything off to the side. This is just to make sure that I haven't missed any red selections. And if I have, then I can hit Control Z, it'll move back to where it was, and I can then deselect whatever red I accidentally missed, and then delete everything else around it. So I've now got the finished surface area for the mask and you can see that it covers all the area where the skin is. All I have to do now is create a layer underneath this and I'm going to create a rectangle with no border and I'm going to have the base of it be the skin color and I'm just going to cover the whole frame like this. And now what I can do is right click on the layer above it which is all the red parts and hit mask. This then creates a mask where those red areas are completely filled in by the layer underneath which is that skin color and this next bit is the awesome bit where the magic happens and our lives are made so much easier. All I have to do is unlock these and go to the very last frame where the Hulk is going to be turning green. I'm going to hit F6 to create a duplicate keyframe and select a green color. Then I'll create a duplicate keyframe on the first frame where the transition begins and I can right click and create a shape tween between these. And you can notice that the color changes for the transition. And then when I lock it in place, everything is locked into the mask that I've created and you can see we already have this really cool skin color transition happening and it's really easy. And the best part is I can unlock it and I can change it to let's say a rich red like this, lock it back in place and we can do the same sort of thing where he transitions into more of a red color. Now I did say this process was in three parts. The first part was creating the mask. The second part was transitioning between the two colors. Now the third part is to create a shadow on the skin and that's just so that it's not this same uh, monotone throughout. So if I lock all these layers except for my first original layer which is all the line work and the flat colors, I'm going to select my brush tool and with a black color selected I'm going to drag down the opacity to 20%. Now what I can do is simply draw in the areas where I want the shadow to be and I can fill it in like that. And now it's simply a matter of going throughout the rest of the animation frame by frame and adding these shadows. And this is going to create quite a lot of depth in the final animation. So after I've gone through and added all of the shadows, this is what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with the result. We can see that it's got a lot more depth to it after I've done those shadows in the skin tone. And the very last thing I want to do is just add a little bit more refinement in the end motion where he stomps on the ground. So I just want to add a little bit more to that uh, build up and release. To do this, all I want to do is just tweak some of the animation I have, but I don't need to add any more hand drawn images. I can simply just duplicate the keyframes and alter the motion slightly. So for example here at the end of this first motion where he pauses it stops a little bit suddenly so I'm just going to create a duplicate keyframe two frames after and I'm just going to tweak the motion by on the second last frame where it's copied just duplicating it and pulling it sort of in between the two motions and I can do things like stretch the limbs in different directions like tweaking them down like this and it just adds a little bit more of a slow transition to the stop and I'm going to do the same with these end frames here or create a duplicate keyframe of this frame again and just before it goes into the next frame I'm going to have it tweak down a little bit just to kind of start things going in that motion. Pull the leg in and down a little bit. As you can see, it's a very subtle in-between frame, but we're essentially just kind of alluding to the motion that's gonna happen. And then the last thing I wanna do is on this very end frame, I'm just gonna duplicate this so that I have the original later on. But earlier when it first happens, I'm gonna just have him 
stomp down and really squash his torso a bit so it's an immediate powerful stomp with a lot of impact and I'm just gonna have it very quickly bounce back up to his original frame position and as you can see it's just a little bit of bounce at the end and it just adds a lot more uh, weight to the character and then the finished animation rah! but of course I need to make my mask visible and lock it in place and now when I hit enter we have the Hulk transformation. Thank you for watching this video ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a long one but uh, there's been a lot of different techniques used and it's a very dramatic sort of animation segment and quite a, a fun thing to kind of see the result of as well. Make sure to keep in mind that if you want to check out the reference files for yourself you can check out this original file by clicking the link in the description. Otherwise thank you for joining me and until next time rah! see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. You can get the reference files for this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And if you want the reference files for all the tutorials I've ever made, check out the tutorial archive. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.